The new mask and text options in Continuum Particle Illusion 2021.5 open up a whole range of creative possibilities when working with Particle Illusion inside After Effects. In this example, I've used particles on a mask to reveal the logo and on the text to reveal the Particle Illusion text. So download the project file and we'll walk through this step by step. Okay, so if you are following along, let's start in the Mask Text Path Start Composition. In here we have the Particle Illusion logo split into the icon at the top, and you can see that it has a couple of masks applied, and Particle Illusion text down the bottom. So this is a live After Effects text layer. So we'll start with the logo. It's going to hide the text for a moment. Now, if we hit the M key on the keyboard, as I mentioned, there are a couple of masks applied, but notice these are set to none. So they're not acting as masks, they're going to act as the paths for the Particle Illusion emitter. So let's apply Particle Illusion by coming up to the Effect and Presets panel. Type in Particle Illusion, I've already got mine here, and double click BCC Particle Illusion. Now we won't see anything happening by default, we need to come in and launch Particle Illusion and add an emitter to the stage. Now if you can't see a workspace similar to mine, just come up to the View menu and choose Load Layout Create. And we're going to use the Glitter Sparkles preset. I'm going to type in GL, this one here, Glitter Sparkles 08. So double click that to add that to the stage. And what we'll do now is come up to View and choose Load Layout Edit. Gives us a bit more space. So we have the new node view down here introduced in Particle Illusion 2021.5. We hit the play button. And it's not looking that interesting just yet. We will make some adjustments to it, but first of all, let's go back into After Effects and get this moving around the logo. Now to do that, we come up to Transforms and choose Emitter. Then from Take Path From, we choose Mask Text. And for the Mask Text layer, we'll choose Logo. And you can see that's moved the emitters down to this point on each of the masks. Now this point or vertex is called the first vertex. So this is the default first vertex when I created these masks. And you can change the first vertex to any vertex either existing or one that you create on the mask. So if I, for example, hit the G key, come up here and add a point. With that selected, come up to the layer menu and choose mask and shape path, set first vertex. See how that pops up to there? So you've got a lot of flexibility in After Effects in deciding where you want your emitter to start on the mask just by using Set First Vertex. I'm going to undo that. Now options for Choose Path include All Masks Simultaneously, which is the default. We have All Masks Sequentially and Single Mask. Let's use this one first. And next what we'll do is just come down to the timeline, hit the Home key to bring the time indicator back to zero, come up and Click the stopwatch for path location. Come down again and hit the end key. And we'll change the path location revolutions to one. It's so nice to finally be able to see emitters running along masks in After Effects. Now if we come to the very end here, you can see that the particles don't disappear. They'll keep being born unless we animate the number of particles down to zero. So with this layer selector, let's just hit the U key just to reveal the keyframes. We'll bring that back to about 80. And you can see what I mean. When we move past that last keyframe, particles are still being born. What we have to do is come back to that keyframe, twirl open particle properties, and click the stopwatch for number to set a keyframe. We're going to move forward one frame by pressing Control right arrow. That's Command right arrow on the Mac. And we'll change the number to zero. the U key again. There's the keyframes and now as we go beyond 80 we have no more particles being born. Okay so just going to save that. Now make some adjustments to the emitter. So click on launch particle illusion and you'll notice that we will see the emitters running along those masks from within particle illusion. And you'll also notice down here the brand new node view introduced in Particle Illusion 
So first thing we'll do is make some adjustments to the particle itself. Clicking on the node, and up here in the parameters for the particle, we'll increase the life to say 20. We'll drop the number down just for a moment, bring that down to 50, just so we can work a little faster. So these are going to last a little longer. We want them to be heavier, so we need to increase the weight. Let's make that uh, 15. Might be a little too heavy. It's not bad. Maybe make that 10. Okay, I'm not minding that. What we'll also do is come up to properties. We'll change the shape. Come into abstract. I'm looking for something a little, yeah, something like that. Just a, a little less blurry. And we have intense turned on. That's what's giving us this sort of blown out white. I think I'll, I'll keep intense. And we'll change the size. Bring that right down to say five. It's even too much. Right down to two. It's something like that. Size variations at seven, so maybe just decrease that. I want them a little smaller, that's better. Particle illusion is way more responsive on the timeline in 2021.5. That looks good. Okay, so with this node still selected, we'll come up to colors. Now we want something a little more magic. I don't like the green, so it's going to click on the stop in the middle here. And change this to maybe a purple. Just grab the blue and bring that right up to the end. Double click, and we'll use maybe a pale pink. You can choose anything you want, of course. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, let's turn on lines. Lines were introduced in Particle Illusion 2021. And if we try connect to emitter, We'll get this interesting look where the particles are running along the mask, but the actual emitter itself is at a stationary point. And you might like that look, but I think I prefer to connect to the birth position. I think this is a much more interesting look. Nice. Almost looks like hair, doesn't it? That's looking good. So we just want to drop the opacity a little bit. Make that 25. Okay, looking good. So let's apply. Okay, and there we go. Nice. Right, so we'll leave that like that for the moment. Let's just take a look at some of these other options. We've got the simultaneously by default. If we choose all masks sequentially, that's going to run the emitter around mask one and then follow that with mask two. So that's a nice look as well. And we've also got the option to choose a single mask. And here we can choose either mask one or two. So with these path options, and with the ability to set the first vertex, you've got a fair bit of flexibility in the direction and the position of the emitter on your After Effects masks. I'm going to bring it back to simultaneously. All right, so what we'll do next is we'll take this, and now that we've got it set up, we'll apply it to the Particle Illusion text. I'm just going to save. Let's copy the effect and come down to Particle Illusion. I'm going to turn this one off and turn this one on and paste. Now there's no masks on this layer, so we need to change from masks to text. In Take Path From, there's just one option for both mask and text. But under Choose Path, we have two options for text, simultaneously and sequentially. Let's choose simultaneously. And for Mask Text Layer, Importantly, we have to choose Particle Illusion. So now you can see it's placed emitters on all of the letters. 
And for letters that have this internal path, it's given it two emitters. And with something like this, where it has a lot of letters, obviously that's a lot more emitters, which means a lot more particles, which means things are going to slow down. So what we might do before we even preview is just come up to particle properties and the U key first. And let's change the number at the start. Let's just change that to 10. Just make sure you have your time indicator over that keyframe. Otherwise, you'll create a new keyframe. So this will give us a lot less particles. And if we preview now, That's definitely going to make it faster, but obviously it exponentially increases the amount of particles. So now it's drawing around the shape of each of those letters. Now we do have options under composite, composite style. We can change that to alpha, and that'll hide the text so we can just see the particles. These are way too big as well, so we can change that directly in continuum just by decreasing the size like that. And simultaneously, while interesting, is not quite right for this text. So what we're going to do is choose sequentially. So changing choose path from text simultaneously to text sequentially. So now we'll have our emitter running along the first letter and then shooting across to the next letter and so on and so on until it reaches the end. Now the fidelity at which the emitter draws the path depends on how much time it has to move from path location keyframe 1 to keyframe 2. So if it's got only a few frames, of course the particle emitter is going to sweep across really quickly. You're not really going to get the shape of the letters. But if it has, you know, 4 or 5 seconds to draw that, you're going to get much better fidelity and uh, detail on those letters. We might want to, you know, decrease the life for the letters. The text might look better if the particles don't live quite as long. It's definitely handy to be able to make these minor adjustments directly inside of After Effects rather than having to launch the PI interface. Okay, so what we want to do now is just increase the number again. Let's make that 50. And once again, the more particles we have, the slower it's going to be. But definitely a good idea to drop your particle count while you're in the creation mode and then bump it back up again when you're going to render. Okay, let's see how that looks with the text turned back on. What we'll do is come back up to alpha and choose direct classic. Okay, so this is where we are so far. Now, I don't think we need the lines for the particle illusion text because it's just way too many lines here. I think what's going to look better is if we change the color of those particles and remove the lines and just add a few more particles there. So coming back into particle illusion. I'm just holding down the space bar and left mouse button here just to get the hand grabber tool, just to move that up a bit. So click on the particle node. First of all, we'll come and turn lines off. And let's make this gold. So double click the first stop. And we'll just choose something like maybe that. Get rid of the second one, just pull it off. And make it white maybe. How does that look? Yeah, I think probably needs to be, let's see, just something pale. Pale yellow. Maybe make this a little more orange, like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. So apply that. And we can increase the number outside, but I might just bump it up in here first. So 50. Let's make this 100. You can see how. It's not really drawing the text that precisely, but that doesn't matter. We're not trying to write the text on. We're just using these particles as a way of revealing the text. So let's click Apply.
All right, so next what we'll do is just use a levels effect just to reveal the logo and the text from darkness. So we'll do the logo first. Just twirl up BCC Particle Illusion and we'll just apply levels. So double click to apply levels. Once again, come back home. And actually we'll go end first, then come up and click on the stopwatch for histogram. And now we'll come back to home. And what we're gonna do is bring the input black all the way to one side and the input white all the way to the other. And this will give us this reveal from darkness. Now we don't want to affect particle illusion, so we'll just bring that below like that. Just turn off the particle illusion layer for a moment. Nice little trick, especially if the layer is not 3D and you don't want to use lights. Just like that. Turn that back on again. Now if we wanted to use a wipe with that effect, we can. We could use a linear wipe, we could use an effect, but I'm just going to use a mask. So I'm going to come up to my window menu and choose tools. I can see my tools. And choose the rectangular tool. For a second, just turn off BCC Particle Illusion. And just draw a big mask like that. Now we want this mask to work with the levels effect rather than masking the layer. So if we twirl open levels, come down to compositing options and click plus. Mask reference is going to use mask one. Now I'm a bit confused as to which mask is which. So I'll rename this mask just by hitting enter. Call this levels. There you go. So it is the levels mask that we want. So this mask is set to add. Hit the V key. And now you can see that mask is being used to mask out the levels effect and not the layer itself. So we should just position the mask like this. Turn back on our particles. Now the particles are using this mask as well. So a quick way to fix this is just to twirl this up. Duplicate that logo layer. Now for the bottom one, we will delete Particle Illusion. So that's our Levels Reveal, like that. And for the top one, we will remove Levels. And importantly, we'll set the Composite from Direct Classic to Alpha Apply Mode. Okay, so see what I'm doing here? That's going to work now. So select, I'm going to actually, first of all, lock the top one. So I don't select that by accident. Now we can reveal that bottom one. So what we'll do is the particles are coming up from the bottom. It might be nice if we keep this in darkness and double click the mask, just bring that have that animating up like that. So we'll start just there. A little bit further down because we're going to feather this. Hit the M key on the keyboard. So the keyframe for mask path. We'll start, we'll start from the beginning, I guess. Just there. Have that moving up all the way to the top. Grab that edge and just bring that up like that. Hit the F key and we'll just deselect the constrain proportions link there. And we want to feather it on the Y axis. So we'll just increase the Y like that. Okay, so we start there. You see they start to illuminate and you start to see that happening there as they move up. Everything's getting brighter and brighter. And now we're fully illuminated and fully revealed. For the bottom one, hit the M key and just remove those masks. For the top one, we have to remove this mask.
and I'm going to rename this one levels for the top one see how it's choosing levels as the mask text layer we have to choose logo that's better nice quick save now what we can do is take that levels effect just copy that come down to our text just hide those for now and paste we've got the levels effect working as expected so now we need to mask this text so hitting the Q key and just putting a mask on there once again it's going to be used as a mask we just want to rename that levels hit the E key reveal levels hit the plus under compositing options and we want levels just delete mask reference to there it will start with it completely covered maybe just double click and make it a little longer like that hit the M key get a keyframe for mask path come to the end here and bring that all the way across like that we want to feather it as well so F deselect Y little too much 143 how does that look yeah I'm using the wrong one so zero one on the X still confuses me after 25 years using After Effects it's like that now it is starting to get a little bright towards the end because this is being revealed sequentially so we could probably actually just make that histogram not animate and maybe come back to the beginning first before turning off the keyframes and just turn off the animation by clicking the stopwatch so now we're just getting the mask to reveal it like that and it's a little fast so maybe we'll just bring it back like that it's a little bit of adjustment now I'm moving the path location wrong keyframe that's the mask path keyframe move that a little bit further down so we're trying to match the leading edge of, of the emitter with the leading edge of the reveal and do we need to put the particle illusion after the levels yeah we sure do otherwise we're going to darken those particles as well that's better so what we want to do now is increase the amount of particles on the number come back to zero we need a lot more so let's make this um, 200 and once again we're not getting that real fidelity with the shape of the letters if we gave more time between the path location keyframes then we get a closer match to the actual shape of the letters what I might do is just increase the particle size and turn on glow maybe just make the glow a little warmer and decrease the glow threshold 
That's probably a little too much. It's making the text a little glowy. If we wanted the glow on the particles and not the text, then we'd need to do what we did with the logo and have the particles on a separate layer. I'll show you what I mean. So we duplicate the text layer. And for the bottom one, we remove particle illusion. And for the top one, we choose alpha apply mode like that. And now we'll get the glow only on the particles and not on the letters. Decrease the threshold. Get right down. Increase the intensity. A little too yellow. Like that kind of thing. We could also maybe just increase the velocity. Like that, just to break it up a little bit. Like that. Turn on these layers. Bring the text maybe to the front. It's actually quite nice because you can see the silhouette of the darkened text. And over the top of everything, add a new adjustment layer, Control Alt or Command Option Y. And if you have Boris Effects Suite, grab Sapphire Ultra Glow. And put a bit of Ultra Glow over everything. That's obviously way too much. Maybe something like that. Now, one thing I did just notice is those level keyframes are revealing the icon too early. So, just going to come to uh, levels, the U key, come back here, and we won't animate the histogram. That's better. And just noticing that that. Ultra Glow Adjustment layer probably shouldn't affect the text. And we can fix that quickly just by dragging the two text layers up above the Ultra Glow Adjustment layer. Okay, so here's where we got to. You may prefer to go in and make your own adjustments, but hopefully that gives you some idea about how useful the brand new masks and text feature in Continuum Particle Illusion 2021.5 can be. So if you're using Continuum, you can get these new features by upgrading to 2021.5. If you haven't used Continuum yet, you can download a fully functional demo and learn more about Particle Illusion on borisfx.com.